All right, folks, let's go ahead and get to business and do something interesting with SDL2 and create a window. So to do this, I'm going to start from the documentation. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and go to the documentation and go ahead to the search functionality or the index. And as you become more familiar with the API, you'll find more ways to search for things. I'm just showing you a quick way to do it. And I'm going to look for the SDL create window function, which I've already got uh, set up here. Now, what we're going to find here is this is sort of the key function here that's going to pop up a window. Again, the advantage of using SDL2 is that it can take care of this for Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android for us with the same function. So just quickly looking at the parameters of this function, we'll give a window title that shows up on the title bar of our window, the X and Y position for which we'd like the window to show up, how big we'd like to be, the width and height, and any other flag. And these flags are going to be things like if we want to do something special with the window. For example, if we want to set it up to use a graphics API like OpenGL, Metal, Vulkan, or so on. In fact, if I scroll down here, you'll see some of the different other options for flags like making a full screen window, doing OpenGL, Vulkan rendering, Metal, and so on. So you can combine these flags again in what's called a sort of fit mask and uh, set that up if you'd like. Again, SDL2 is a very mature library and has lots of features. So this is how we can set things up. And you can see that the vast amount of features is a result of it being a long-lived stable library. All right, let's scroll down a little bit further. And we can see some of the example here on creating window. And I'm not going to do anything too crazy, but I'm going to look at this example and sort of rewrite it in a C++ way, uh, but keep it open for reference here. So let's go ahead and do that in my other uh, window here. And the first thing that I'm going to want to do is go ahead and build a window. So SDL underscore window and give it some sort of name. So we have some pointer here. Now this window is just local to this function, so I'm not going to do anything special with it, but it's created here. So create a window data type. And again, this is going to be C style programming. So we're doing things often with raw pointers, and that's how you're going to see it. Again, the motivation being C is a very portable language to be implementing some windowing and input library and so it can run on multiple platforms. Okay, so let's go ahead and initialize our video system here. Here you can see they're not doing any error checking for the purpose of making this a small example, but typically you would want to do something like this to recover any error codes and debug. Okay, so let's go ahead and once we've created our window, I'm going to go ahead and um, initialize the subsystem, or rather at this point we just have a pointer. It doesn't point to anything, so let's go ahead and make it a null pointer. And then I'm going to go ahead and create the window. So the window is going to be equal to this create window function. This function is essentially returning us a pointer or a handle back to some window that we can use. So let's do SDL create window, uh, give it a title, uh, C++ SDL2 window, and some of the parameters. Now you'll notice in this example that they don't define any initial X and Y positions. Let's go ahead and just give one zero and zero for the top and left uh, corner of our screen. So it'll appear somewhere over here for you. Uh, the window height 640 by say 480. And we might want to use uh, SDL or maybe we don't want to do anything. So for now, I'm just going to use some flag to make sure that the window is shown or visible. So if I scroll up here and see some of my options here, I like SDL window shown. Although by default it's ignored, but it can sort of be uh, implicit. SDL window shown. Meaning that by default, when you create the window, it's going to show unless I explicitly tell it to be hidden. Okay, so let's try this much so far. And what I'm going to do at this point is hide so you don't uh, need to see me. Review our example one more time. And they do a nice trick in this example here where they're just going to open the window up for essentially 3,000 milliseconds here, or three seconds, uh, just so that we know it can be created. So let's go ahead and use that trick as well. And this is an SDL function related to time. 
and that we can just delay or pause the execution of our program. All right. And finally, we have to destroy our window as well. Uh, I'll talk about this in a moment. Let's just get this uh, working here, uh, and we'll pass a handle or the pointer into the window that we were working here, and then do SDL to cut down all of our subsystems. All right, so let's go ahead and see if this compiles here. It does. I'm going to run it. It's going to show up. Um, I have two monitors, so it showed up in the very top of my screen. So let's go ahead and adjust this here to, say, 2000. Let's see if it shows up. And since I've made a change, I need to recompile. Apologies for that. Hit rerun. And almost in the bottom corner, but it should be showing up on your screen at this point here. Uh, how about we do 2500? Just so you can see it popping up here. Oops. 25,000 would be a bit too much. Recompile. Rerun. And I guess it's by default always showing up on my screen one. But you get the idea here of what's going on. So let me go ahead and explain a little bit more about what's going on in this code. So I've created our window pointer here that we're eventually going to use with the SDL create window function. This is going to allocate some memory behind the scenes for what a window is to create a 640 by 480 window with any additional features that we have in the following title bar. And then we delay our program for 3000 seconds. Now, because we're creating a pointer, that means we're dynamically, uh, or using a pointer rather behind the scenes, we're dynamically allocating some memory, right? We are creating something here. So what is created must also be destroyed in the sense that we need to reclaim that memory when we're done with this window. For example, we could have an STL application with multiple windows, and we delete them all. Remember, we're programming in C here, so we don't have destructors or anything of that notion. We're passing in a pointer to a function that's going to destroy or deallocate the memory for our window. And finally, when we call the STL quit, that's essentially going to be the inverse operation of when we've initialized the subsystem. It's going to go ahead and safely turn off the video system, audio system, or anything else that we've enabled in STL. So I hope that was helpful, and we're starting to get something more exciting here where we can pop up an SDL window and do some multimedia uh, programming here. All right, we'll see you in the next lesson.